I grew up in this podunk town in Nebraska, and in the 18 years I lived there, only two significant things happened. The first thing, and probably the best thing, is that I was born. I know, you're all very welcome. But the second, and perhaps the worst thing that ever happened in our town, was when Kevin Meyer set his garage on fire. Or rather, maybe what Kevin did constituted the worst thing that never happened to our town, and if that doesn't make any sense, bear with me. All will become clear over the course of the next few paragraphs. So it was a Sunday night and I was in my freshman year of high school at the time, so still at that age when me and my friends would go out on our bikes for an evening. You know, good old wholesome fun. We're just riding around when we see another kid from our class riding down the street at top speed. We stop to say hey and in between panting breaths the kid's like, Oh my god guys, the Myers garage is on fire, come look! We then hurtled down the street at full speed, following the kid from our class until we're faced with this raging inferno that used to be the Myers family garage. Only, right as we get there, we're immediately told to keep back by the cops and firefighters on scene. We thought we were already at a safe distance, so we're kind of confused but did as we're told. Only then we start hearing all these pops and bangs coming from the garage, and the firefighters trying to put the flames out suddenly ran for cover. I had no idea what was causing the little bangs, but if it was scaring the cops and the firefighters, then I figured I should have been scared of it too. I actually thought the Meyer house was about to explode or something, and so did my buddies, so we had no problem getting out of there quick, riding home and telling our parents about it. The next morning at school, all the kids were talking about the fire, mainly because Kevin Meyer hadn't showed up to any of his classes. Some kids were spreading rumors saying they'd seen the paramedics loading him up onto an ambulance, and he was so badly burned that he was just a smoldering husk. Others said that he and his parents had gone to live with relatives since the fire had made their house basically unlivable, which is the story I believe because I figured there'd be actual confirmation if anyone had died. But then the next morning, there was confirmation. News reports said that firefighters had recovered one body from the burned out garage while the surviving family members were staying with relatives and had asked the media to give them some space. So, on that Tuesday, we knew someone had died, but we had no idea exactly who. The Myers had three generations living in that house, and Kevin was one of four kids. A bunch more rumors began swirling, and it was only the following day when our high school principal called us all in for a special assembly that we actually got any concrete answers. I remember the whole school filing into the gymnasium where the county sheriff and a handful of deputies were all stood in front of the bleachers, each of them with a real serious look on their faces. Once we were all seated, the principal opened up by saying that the county sheriff had something important to talk to us about, and as he stepped forward and took his hat off, I swear you could have heard a pin drop. We knew it was going to be something about the Meyer family, but exactly what it was, I'd swear I'd never have guessed in a million years. I'm not about to pretend I can remember what the guy said word for word. This all happened almost 20 years ago now, but this is basically the gist of it. Folks, you've all heard about the fire over at the Meyer place, and I'm sure you've all heard about the tragic loss of life. Well, I'm sorry to have to be the one to tell you, but your classmate Kevin was the one who passed. There was a kind of rolling gasp across the gym, and the sheriff paused for a second before continuing. Now, we're still trying to figure out how the fire started, so we're inviting anyone with any information on Kevin to please step forward. You don't have to do it now. You can call my office whenever you like, and we can have a more discreet conversation. But please, if you have anything to tell us about any strange or unusual behavior Kevin exhibited in the days before the fire... I implore you to step forward. That was the first clue we had that something was really wrong. I guess they wanted to handle the whole thing with kid gloves and I can totally understand why they might want to shield us from what they already knew. The initial reaction was one of total shock and grief. Kids were horrified that one of their own had died in such a horrible way. 
but if the cops had told us what they'd really found in there, I don't think people would have been nearly as sad. More like, angry. It took two more days for the truth to come out, and by that time, the town had decided to defer responsibility to our parents. There was a town meeting, I remember that, because my parents asked me to do my chores before they returned, and all I did was play Perfect Dark for like two hours. When they got home, I thought they'd be mad that I hadn't even put a dent into any of the stuff I had to do, but they weren't mad. They had these weird but sad, but intense looks on their faces, exactly the same ones they had when my grandpa died suddenly. They sit me down in the TV room and ask how well I knew Kevin. I tell them not much that I had Spanish class with him, but that we never talked. They then start asking me a bunch of other questions if Kevin ever got mad at me, if I liked him, stuff like that. In the end, I just straight up told them it was obvious they knew something about Kevin, and that I'd rather they just told me that it was him taking his own life or something because I was old enough to handle the truth. Turns out, I was not old enough to handle the truth. Kevin hadn't taken his own life. He'd accidentally blown himself up trying to make a bomb. Apparently, he wanted to test his method out by making a test model. But as he was putting it together, he somehow detonated the thing and made it enough of a bang to kill him before setting his garage on fire. At first, it had looked like he might have just been a firebug, you know, like a pyromaniac, and he was just screwing around with an accelerant or something. That's why it took a few days for the cops to be sure of what happened. They had to go over the burned out garage and go through Kevin's stuff to try and work out why he did it. The cops then found a journal Kevin had been keeping, one where he'd basically laid out his plan to build a bomb then put it under the church one Sunday morning while it was full of families. The cops wouldn't say exactly what the rest of the journal consisted of, only that it made for highly disturbing reading and that there were several references to the Columbine massacre of the year before. Mom was crying by the end of the talk, and Dad was the most shaken up I'd ever seen him. That kid wanted to kill almost the entire town, and let me tell you, if he'd hit the church around the upcoming Veterans Day service, he'd have killed like 90% of the people in our town, all in one fiery blast. And the most I ever got for an explanation was just, the kid wanted to hurt people, or he wasn't right. No one really bullied the kid or gave him a hard time, he was just crazy, I guess. But I also thank God that he wasn't smarter and that he didn't like put a little more research in or take a little more care, because if he had, he might have wiped our entire town right off the map. <laughs>